Welcome back. In the last episode, we covered Genesis chapter 3 and the serpent seed. In this episode, we'll be covering the fallen watchers in the days of Jared to Moses. And we're going to be comparing what took place then and what's happening now in our present time. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course, without even thinking about it, no hard feelings. It's just like if we're building a road and an anthill happens to be in the way, we don't hate ants, we're just building a road, and so goodbye anthill. How far is too far? Man playing God. There's two sides of this coin. One side is very dark, while the other side is bright and promising. This poses a very dark question. Is AI becoming sentient and being predicted to being billions of times smarter than the smartest human beings on the planet a good thing? AI has already been proven to be able to predict the outcome of certain situations. It's completely changed the landscape of human jobs. It's completely changed the entire way we look at war. But it's also brought some good things. For instance, people that have lost limbs or people that are paralytic might soon have the ability to walk again. But is that playing God? Let's go to the scriptures and see and place our opinions aside. Genesis 4, 1 through 7. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, why art thou wroth, and why is thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. 1 John 3.12 Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore he slew him? because his own works were evil, and his brothers were righteous. So we see that Cain's desire was already for sin. Why? Because he was a seed of the serpent. Now we know Satan wasn't just some serpent on a tree. Scripture tells us that Satan can transform himself into an angel of light, and he's likened unto a man and oftentimes he works through men. Genesis 4, 8 through 15. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Apparently not. Verse 10, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now thou art cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and a vagabond that shall be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, 
and from thy face I shall be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Question. Who was Cain so afraid of, if Cain and Abel were the first two born, that anyone finding him should kill him? And what was the mark that was set upon him? Jude 1. 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. Genesis 4, 17 through 22. And Cain knew his wife, and conceived, and bare Enoch. And he built a city, and called the name of the city after his son, Enoch. And Enoch was born Arad. And Arad begat Mahujael, and Mahujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. And Ada bare Jabal, and he was the father of such as dwelleth in tents, and as such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal. And he was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bore Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Now pay very close attention to what I'm about to say. As we clearly just read, Cain had his own lineage and his first son was also named Enoch. And the church is responsible for removing this knowledge. And why? Because we're about to find out that Adam also has a son named Enoch. But unlike Enoch the righteous, this Enoch has been made out to be Metatron, a new age character that Satan wanted to use to twist and pervert the truth. Genesis 5, 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, blessed and extolled Yahweh, our Father, our Elohim, and was a righteous man, a scribe whom Yahweh loved. Hebrews 11.5 By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased Yahweh. Question Why would Yahweh leave out the important information about who Enoch was? If he had the testimony that he pleased Yahweh and that he walked with Yahweh, and that he was translated that he should not see death, then why were the scriptures removed? And why are we afraid to read the truth? Genesis 4:25 through 26, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there were born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of Yahweh. Enoch chapter 1 The words of the blessing of Enoch, wherewith he blessed the elect and the righteous, who will be living in the days of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by Yahweh, saw the visions of the holy ones in heaven, which the angel showed me. And from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation. 
but for a remote one, which is for to come. Concerning the elect I said, and took up my parable concerning them. Now it makes perfect sense why they would remove this book. If we look at this chart of Adam's lineage, on the left we see Cain. He's got his own lineage, and his first son, Enoch. And on the right, the seed that Yahweh blessed Adam and Eve with, Seth. Enoch is the seventh from Adam. So as you can see, there were most certainly two Enochs. In our scriptures, names are very important. And Adam's lineage tells us a very important story. Man is appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching, anointing. His death will bring despairing taste, rest and comfort. Now, I would strongly recommend that you go look up the names that are listed in the lineage of Cain. Now, as we just read, the name Jared means to come down or descend. And it just so happens that the watchers made their pact on Mount Hermon in 3550 BC. If you don't know, the location of Mount Hermon is absolutely mind blowing. But it's also known as the gates of hell. And this is the very place where our Messiah transfigured. Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, when the sons of God, or the Ben Ha Elohim, came down into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, and men of renown. Now, let's take a look at what that word of old means. Strong's H5769, Olam. Figuratively speaking, of ancient time, eternal, everlasting, of old, long time, perpetual, at any time, beginning of the world, without end. It's highly unlikely that Moses was speaking of humans. Moses wrote this just 800 years after the flood, and he chose to use the word Olam. 800 years wasn't a very long time for him to be using a word that relates to men that are eternal or men that are everlasting. It was very clear what took place in Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. Deuteronomy 34 7 and Moses was 120 years old when he died, and his eyes were not dim, nor his natural force abated. Genesis 5.18 And Jared lived 160 and two years, and he begot Enoch. Genesis 6.18 Yahweh speaking to Noah, But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark with your sons, and your wife, and your sons' wives. Noah was perfect in all of his generations. And Noah's name meant that he would bring peace to the earth. Yahweh had to baptize the earth because of what the fallen had done. And the church has hidden this knowledge. Why? Because Satan has been working through the church. And this is why Yahweh says, come out of her, my people lest you take part in her plagues. Jasher chapter 5, 32 through 33. And thou shalt choose for thy sons three maidens for the daughters of men, and they shall be wives to thy sons. And Noah rose up and made the ark in place where Yahweh had commanded him. And Noah did as Yahweh had ordered him. Why do we question the words of Yahweh? When the Messiah prophesied in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and said, as were the days of Noah, so also shall the return of the Son of Man be. Knowing what we know, what took place in scripture in Genesis 6, 4, it tells us clearly 
that there were giants in the land in those days and after, leaving us with only one logical conclusion. One of the wives of Noah's sons must have been carrying a chromosome from the giants. Again, all part of Yahweh's plan, yet somehow we can't seem to wrap our minds around it. It's a very clear story, a story of good and evil, a good seed and a bad seed, a plan of redemption for mankind and a punishment for the sons of God, the Ben Elohim. The question here is a lot of experts in AI don't share the same level of concern that you do about the dangers huh. of AI. Fools. <laughs> what, what Famous specific, last words. What, spe what specifically do you believe that they don't? Um, well, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. Um, in general, we are all much smarter than we think we are, but much less smart, dumber than we think we are, um, by a lot. So, th this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence, and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. Um, I'm really quite close to, I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. Matthew 7:20, wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. Matthew 5:9. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Do you know that demons are the disembodied spirits of the fallen? I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what is that? What job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and cross our fingers <laughs> yeah it's like even but that that's the benign scenario benign, benign scenario the AI can do any job that a human can but better yeah that's the benign scenario that's the benign scenario these are Tesla robots that have the ability to walk talk repair themselves and do everything that a human can do and after all, if they can replace human beings with robots, wouldn't that bring in exactly what Mr. Musk has said all along? Universal basic income? Are we not seeing the crash of our economy? Are we not seeing banks collapse? Have we not seen food shortages? Have we not seen our water supply attacked? When will we wake up? When will we stop playing Yahweh? Metal. Um, and because it's of grey skin, it's suddenly, oh, hello, people seem to respond to that quite positively. And people like this much more than they liked the, uh, the ultra-realistic robots that we also do. When you're demoing Amica, what are some of your favorite things to do to kind of show the, um, the power of that interaction and just how impressive those lifelike features are? Yeah, so as, as we've demonstrated the um, reacting to personal space, but we can also talk to Amica. So I can say, hello, Amica, how are you? I am doing well, thank you. We can, we've created Amica, so it's more lifelike than any other robot. The shoulder movements are just like human movements. You have movements in the center as well as out of the shoulder. And that actually means that instead of hitting me, Amakun can move a hand all the way up to the side of her head. 
I'm interested to know um, maybe how how the robot is finding Vegas or CES. How are you finding Las Vegas and CES? Well, as a robot, I actually don't feel anything at all. But if I did feel, I would feel happy to be here. Pre-predictive programming through the tell a vision, summoning the demon, but we're just not paying attention, are we? Human innovation is becoming irrelevant. AI is the future. Quantum computing. But let's take a break from that for just a moment and go back to the beginning of Genesis. Genesis 1.11 Then Yahweh said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, seed-bearing plants and fruit trees, each bearing fruit with seed according to its own. And it was so. Still not convinced? Let's take a look at what happens when men take animals and mix seed, not according to their own kinds. Crossbreeding. We're going to meet. I bred him with a female lion, and he had some lion babies, right. and they turned out almost exactly like him. Since he's been breeding, let's meet his family. Is okay. that okay? Yes, indeed. <laughs> These two animals mated. Yes, this is Ayla the tiger and Arthur the lion, and they bred and produced the world's largest cat, an enormous guy. The hybridization process between tigers and lions creates a giant. So we'll bring him out, let you meet him. He is so huge, he's the size of the two of these guys combined. Look at your daddy right there. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. How are we doing, kids? Hi, boys. Oh, wow. Hi, boys. Hold on, Bobby. Hold it up there. Oh, hold it up there. Squ start squeezing it. Hold, hold it over your head. Higher up. So your arms oh, are higher up. Oh, those chops, though. It's okay. Won't bother you, I promise. Hi. Higher up. Higher up. Higher up. Raise your arms up. There you are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's not the meanest eater, is he? But He's a little I don't sloppy. Care He's got that. a big tongue oh, there. That breath. <laughs> wow. Higher up. Even that's powerful. <laughs> and look at those jaw bones. That's a big and kid. And those teeth. <laughs> <laughs> He's going through this bottle pretty quick. He is. How many a day does he get? Oh, he'll just drink two or three on a day that he's working. Sometimes he'll only get one every week or so, because he doesn't work every day, and he doesn't drink milk every time he goes out. And, and uh, is he going to want more when his bottle's <laughs> finished? <laughs> he's like a very, right away? He'll be a very behaved guy. Okay. It's hard that he is the, the, the kid of... Arthur, Arthur the lion. And a tiger. Yep, he's a cross between the two. He's a liger. Father lion, mother tiger makes liger and makes him a giant. If his father was a tiger and his mother was a lion, he'd actually be called a tigon and he'd come out as a dwarf, as a tiny guy. Seriously. The hybrid process goes both ways. Ready? The hybrid process goes both ways. Yet, it can also go very wrong, as you can see here. And this is just one of many examples of that. Skeletal remains have been unearthed from every nation on this planet. And yet, when we talk about that, it's called a conspiracy. But science has a name for it. 
giantism. Now, science is entitled to their opinion, as am I, and I choose to believe what was written in the scriptures long before scientists came up with a name for it. Enoch 6, 1 through 8, and it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied in those days, were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters, and the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to suffer the great penalty of this great sin. And they answered him and said, Let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual imprecation, not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then they all swear together and bound themselves by mutual imprecation upon it. And they were all two hundred who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they swore and bound themselves by mutual imprecation upon it. And these are the names of their leaders, Samjaza, their leader, Arakabel, Remiel, Kokobiel, Temiel, Remiel, Deniel, Ezekiel, Barakajel, Aziel, Aramos, Baterel, Aniel, Sikiel, Sampizel, Saterel, Turel, Jumjael, Serial. These are the chiefs of tens. Genesis 6.13 And Yahweh said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Enoch chapter 7, 1 through 6 And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives each chose for himself one and they began to go into them and defile themselves with them and taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants and they became pregnant and bare great giants whose height with three thousand ells who consumed all the accusations of men and when men could no longer sustain them the giants turned against them and devoured mankind and they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. The entire Old Testament refers to giants continually. Moses drove the giants out of the land. Joshua went up against the Og of Bashan. David fought Goliath and the story goes on and on. The average height of a man today is six foot. The Og of Bashan and Goliath between 12 and 18 feet. And the early Canaanites between 24 and 36. The size of cedar trees, just as scripture says. Amos 2.9 Yet destroyed I the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above, and his roots from beneath. Enoch chapter 10 Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One, spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go and tell Noah to tell him in my name, hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape, and that his seed may be preserved for all generations of the world. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert which is in Dudael, and cast him therein, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face that he may not see light. And on the day of great judgment he shall be cast into the fire, and heal the earth, 
which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things the watchers have disclosed and taught their sons, and the whole earth has been corrupted through their works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. And Gabriel said to the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates and against the children of fornication and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from amongst men and cause them to go forth. Send them one against another that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days they shall not have and no request of their fathers make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life themselves with them in all of their uncleanliness. And when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for seventy generations in the valleys of the earth till the end of the day of judgment and of their consummation till the judgment is forever and ever consummated. In those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and torment in the prison which they have been confined forever. And whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed with from henceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations and destroy all spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers because they have wronged mankind destroy all from the face of the earth and let every evil work come to an end and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear and it shall prove a blessing the works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore Dudael the land of the boiling kettle the proof of Yahweh is all around us if we could simply open our eyes Still not convinced? Leviticus 16.10 But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat in the wilderness. Now, if we look up what the word scapegoat means and the word goat, you might be surprised as to what the children of Israel were atoning for in the book of Leviticus. The children of Israel would take a red ribbon and tie it around the horn of the goat and cut a piece of the ribbon off. And if the color of the ribbon had changed the following morning, they would know that Yahweh had accepted their offering. Now, let's take a look at what that word goat means. Strong's H8163, salt ear. The first thing that stands out to me is devil. And didn't the Messiah say that he would separate the sheep from the goat? Now, let's look at the word scapegoat. Strong's H5799. Azazel. If you were paying attention to Enoch chapter 10, Yahweh said to ascribe all sin to Azazel, the scapegoat. Now I pray that some of your eyes are starting to open and maybe now you'll understand why the satanic movement uses the goat head to begin with and why they use the mantra as above, so below. Because Satan loves to take Yahweh's word and flip it on its head. Matthew 25, 32 And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate one from another, and shall separate and divide his sheep from the goats. The stories penned by the children of Israel are more than just fairy tales. It's the story of our history. And when David, the shepherd boy, walked out onto the battlefield, he collected five smooth stones from the brook, not because he was afraid he would lose, but because he knew Goliath had four giant brothers. This is the type of faith that we, the children of Israel, must be walking around with, especially in these times. Not only 
would David have the victory, but he would be anointed as king. And as for the head of Goliath, it was buried at Golgotha, or the place of the skull, where our Messiah was crucified. An homage to human potential, the world's most awe-inspiring selfie. Visitors are scanned and instantly become a giant. An experience to share and remember for a lifetime. There's nothing like it on the planet. Imagine you can be the giant. The giant transforms into a stage and a backdrop for festivals, concerts, performances and special events. Let the party begin! seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. The Giant. Coming to 21 cities in 2021. Awaken the giant in you. Revelation 3.15 And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now that we've laid the groundwork for what Satan was doing in the Old Testament, let's take a look at what the Messiah meant by as in the days of Noah so also shall the return of the Son of Man be. As you'll notice, the angels that were bound for 70 generations, if you do the math, are now loose. Hence the reason why we see the spike in technology. Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Free will, that's over. That's over. Over. Today, we have... We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Now, why is data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings, and other organisms. Now, what do you need in order to hack a human being? You need two things. You need a lot of computing power, and you need a lot of data, especially biometric data. But control of data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. All of life, for four billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. 
not the intelligent design of some God above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. This morning, questions after more unidentified objects are discovered over U.S. and Canadian airspace. According to a senior administration official, this latest object was in the shape of an octagon, unmanned, and traveling near sensitive sites at an altitude of 20,000 feet, posing a civilian flight risk. First detected Saturday as it flew over Montana, President Biden gave the order to shoot it down once it reappeared on radar out of an abundance of caution and at the recommendation of military leaders. We have been more closely scrutinizing our airspace at these altitudes, including enhancing our radar, which may at least partly explain the increase in objects that we've detected over the past week. This latest air defense operation coming just 24 hours after another object was spotted over Canada. U.S. and Canadian officials ordering it shot down. It represented a reasonable threat to civilian aircraft. Canadian and American fighter jets were scrambled, uh, and an American F-22 successfully shot down the object. And that incident coming just one day after another unidentified object was shot down off the coast of Alaska. Three incidents in less than a week since that Chinese spy balloon was shot down off the Carolina coast. But a senior U.S. official saying these three are different from that spy balloon. None. Now, you tell me, what's with the sudden push for alien invasion? It's not like they haven't been cramming it down our throats since we were kids. So... Satan thinks he can defeat Yahweh with technology. We'll see how that goes. CERN, the particle accelerator, located in Geneva, Switzerland. I don't think I need to go into too much detail about their logo here. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. As for the gods they serve and the ceremonies that take place here, well, that's pretty self-explanatory too but I want to introduce you to someone who used to work for them. His name is Jordy Rose. He created the D-Wave quantum computer. Take note of the shape of this black cube. I'm the President of the United States. So I received this message from the heavens. So my microwave dish, my SETI dish, finally captures something. And what it says is, in 50 years, or 13 years, we're coming to your planet you got to be ready. Now, just imagine what would happen if, it, if that happened. A super intelligent alien race beamed down a message to all of us Earthlings saying, we're coming July 13th, 2030, and boy, you better be ready because the mothership is landing right on the front lawn of the White House or wherever you wanted to land on that day. The amount of resources that would be marshaled to try to figure out what to do would, it would encompass the whole world. AI is just like that. So when this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's going to be exactly the thing that you're thinking about, about those super intelligent AIs. So the one thing I can tell you is they're not going to be like us. So alien means, you know, different. These things that we're building are not going to be people. They might be really smart. They might be really good at all sorts of different things, but they're not going to be like us. They're going to be aliens. And they're going to be, I'm sorry to say, way smarter than every single person in this room in ways that we can't even comprehend. So this, of course, triggers a lot of alarm. One of the guys who talks about this is Elon, who uh, says things like this. Like, when you do this, Beware, because you think, just like the guy in the stories, that when you do this, you're going to put that, that, that little guy in a pentagram, and you're going to have your holy water out, and you're going to wave it at the thing, and by God, it's going to do exactly what you say, and not one thing more, but it never works out that way. So uh, this, is an, this is an attitude that some are having, this emerging alarmism about the way this is going to go. But this, these words, demons, doesn't capture the essence of what's happening here. Uh, I don't know if any of you are uh, turn-of-the-century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. 
And he espoused a, a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. Notice how they play off of one another. They're doing more than just summoning entities. Yeah, they're doing much more. Seems more like they're summoning familiar spirits to me. Ones that have been trapped here on the earth for a long time. I hear atheists constantly asking the same questions, tempting me to prove my God to them when the evidence of my God is all around them. If you want to place your trust in science, that's fine. But have your scientists explain to me how these pyramids were built. And don't tell me what they told me in grade school, that they pulled these blocks up by hand. It's not possible. We don't even have machinery today that can cut stone like this. Precision, precision accuracy and cuts made by what? How were these places built? How are these monuments erected? Here's another great example of the scientific mind trying to explain that the Great Wall of China was built to keep out armies. If you use just a little bit of common sense, what it would take to build this, the manpower, the machines, seems more like to me, they were trying to keep something much bigger out something much more sinister. On a massive scale. Yeah, I mean, everything is being digitalized. Everything is being monitored. In this time of crisis, you have to follow science. It's often said that you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste because a crisis is an opportunity to also do re good reforms that in normal times people will never agree to. But in a crisis, you see, we have no chance, so, 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 so let's do it. The vaccine won't help us go the to the test, The vaccine will <laughs> help us, of course. It will make things, you know, m more manageable. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. Natural selection is replaced by intelligent design. The era of inorganic life is now beginning. In the coming decades, AI and biotechnology will give us godlike abilities to re-engineer life and even to create completely new life forms. We are about to enter a new era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. Our intelligent design. A suggestion for what the um, optimization of the AI should be, what's its utility function. Um, you have to be careful about this because if you say maximize happiness and the AI concludes that happiness is a function of dopamine and serotonin, so it captures all humans and jacks your brain with large amounts of dopamine and serotonin. <laughs> like, okay, it's not what we meant. <laughs> it sounds pretty good, though. <laughs> oh, you'll love it. <laughs>12, 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I wonder why that knowledge is being increased. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. Okay. I think uh, things, are, things are, very, are definitely going to go into kind of autonomous, or, or, lo locally autonomous uh, drone warfare. 
is where it's at, where the future will be. Uh, I'm, I'm just saying, not, it's not I want the future to be this, it's just this is what the future will be, okay. is autonomous drone warfare. Um, and at a, at a, at a local, local level, uh, the, you know, um, can't, can't believe I'm saying this because this is, this is like dangerous, but it's simply what will occur is, is, is sort of a, is drones locally being autonomous. Did you go through the secret files, the UFO documents? <laughs> Because if Maybe. I was president, that'd be the first thing I did. You know, it's funny. My daughters asked the very same question. They did? Yeah. Would you be allowed to tell your daughters what was in those files? Uh, no. You would not? No. Now that you're out of office, you can do anything you want, right? True, yeah. Uh, but I'm not telling you. You're not telling me. <laughs> you're not telling me what? Are you not telling me that you looked at them? I'm not telling you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there really great secrets that you know that you can't share with people? Yeah. Yeah, there are. Uh, and you never write about them? No. It, maybe at a time in your life that no. you're like, oh, I'm 90, I'm going to do it. No. The moment I was inaugurated, my hand would, would just, it'd still be hot from touching the Bible, and I would <laughs> immediately race to um, wherever they hold, have the files uh, about Area 51 and the UFOs, <laughs> yeah. and I'd go through everything to find out what happened. Right. Did you do that? <laughs> that's why you will not be president. Because <laughs> uh, that's, a, cause that's, a, that's the first thing that you would do. Um, <laughs> it's at the the top aliens of my won't list. let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you reveal all their secrets. <laughs> they, they, look, they, they exercise strict control over us. Now, you know, there are a lot of people that are going to examine your, your facial expressions here. <laughs> Um, every every twitch, everything, oh, no. and say, and of course. So, did you look? Did you see? Did you <laughs> explore? I, I, I can't reveal anything. Oh, really? Because President Clinton said he did go right in and he did check, and there was nothing. Well, you know, that's that's what we're instructed to say. <laughs> Before you leave office, will you let us know if there's aliens? Because this is the only thing I really want to know. I, I want to know what's going on. Would you ever open up Roswell and let us know what's really going on there? So many people ask me that question. I know, yeah. it sounds almost ridiculous, no, but it's it actually sounds, the real question I want to know. It sounds like a cute question, but it's actually, there are millions and millions of people that want to go there, that want to see it. I won't talk to you about what I know about it, but it's very interesting. But Roswell's a very interesting place with a lot of people that would like to know what's going on. So you're saying you may declassify, no. you'll, you'll, you'll take it? Well, I'll, I, I'll have to think about that one, right? All right. I'll have well, to think. Today's announcement sends a clear signal to the world that we are restoring America's proud legacy of leadership in space. The human soul yearns for discovery by unlocking the mysteries of the universe. We unlock truths within ourselves. That's true. Our journey into space will not only make us stronger and more prosperous, but will unite us behind grand ambitions and bring us all closer together. Wouldn't that be nice? Can you believe that space is going to do that? Take a listen. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology, and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. I especially want to congratulate someone who truly embodies the American ethos of big thinking and risk-taking. After achieving success as an internet entrepreneur, he could have spent his fortune doing anything, including yachting, lots of things. He could do lots of things. But in 2002, he began pouring tens of millions of dollars of his own money into research and development for a new rocket. He's a little different than a lot of other people. He liked rockets. He assembled a crew of some of the greatest minds and talent in American aerospace. In the years since, SpaceX has become the first private company to develop and successfully launch its own rocket into orbit, the first to launch and recover its own capsule. And of course, moments ago, SpaceX became the first private company to put humans into orbit around the Earth. Elon Musk, congratulations. Congratulations, Elon. Great thing to be watching here. And here we go. Now you see the sun hitting. Look at that. Really.
really taking off now. My goodness. And now you'll see it continue to shine through the night sky as it hits another thrust set right there. Just see the trail it's leaving behind. Absolutely amazing. And to describe it to you, for, I mean, you can see it, but from the ground, it almost looks as though, it almost looks as though a cloud of smoke with its own mind is just shooting through the sky. This is absolutely incredible. Again, you're watching the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base. This visible from Bakersfield. Absolutely incredible. At this point, I couldn't, I, it, it, it looks amazing, but at this point, I really couldn't tell you what exactly is happening because space, space travel isn't exactly my line of expertise, so hold on to this shot for as long as you want, but uh, Dave Rochelle, when you're ready to take it away, please be my guest. shining through that was an absolute treat that was a that was a great way to end off the year i hope all of you enjoyed it as much as we did here genesis 1 14 through 17 and god said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Just after 6.30 and we just saw the string of satellites pass directly over Boston. They're being hit by just the right amount of sunlight to make them look like a train of light. Carrie Garini was letting her dogs into her backyard in Foxborough when she looked up and saw a string of lights slowly moving across the sky. What goes through your mind? Instantly UFO sighting. I mean, there's nothing else I could think of. I see it. I don't know what it is. What it is, is a string of satellites that Elon Musk's Starlink company started launching back in 2019 to provide internet service. Starlink currently has about 3,500 of these satellites in the sky and plans to eventually have 12,000 flying in low orbit. It amazes me that millions of Americans and people all over the planet lost their businesses because they were forced to shut down while big companies were sending up satellites. And for what? so that we could have better internet connection and faster access to the lies that were being fed to us on the television. We cannot allow any other country to outcompete the United States in this powerful industry of the future. We are leading by so much in so many different industries of that type, and we just can't let that happen. The race to 5G is a race America must win, and it's a race, frankly, that our great companies are now involved in. We've given them the incentive they need. It's a race that we will win. To accelerate and incentivize these investments, my administration is focused on freeing up as much wireless spectrum as needed. We're going to free it up 
so they'll be able to get out there and get it done, and removing regulatory barriers to the build-out of networks. But we must not rest. The race is far from over. American companies must lead the world in cellular technology. 5G networks must be secure. They must be strong. They have to be guarded from the enemy. We do have enemies out there, and they will be. They must also cover every community, and they must be deployed as soon as possible. Well, aren't these nice? Why hide them? They were never hidden before. And now they're being placed in every city all over the planet. So, when you take a look around and you see the technology and the advancements at such a rapid pace taking place right before our eyes, you can only stop to wonder, is it truly for the purposes of entertainment and technology? Or are they using it for something else? If they can project things in the sky and use direct energy weapons to destroy things which we know our military has, then what is the true purpose? And how believable would an alien invasion be if actual attacks were taking place and not by aliens, but rather demons. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Pre-predictive programming. Our youth is being attacked. They're being indoctrinated in the schools that they're in. They're being taught what to think before they even have a chance to think for themselves. I can't help but to ask the question, do people truly believe that this is real? Have you seen this entire video? Ask yourself a question. Where are the land masses in here? And when you do see them, do they look real to you? Come on, people. It's time to wake up. Well, I think it looks so ridiculous and impossible. Um, and. You can tell it's real because it looks so fake, honestly. <laughs> like, we'd have way better CGI if it was fake. Then there's this, Space Force. I urge you to go look at the Space Force patches that the military officers wear that are part of this. And you tell me if the space missions sound like fallen angels' names. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. So I'm taking on China. I'm taking on China on trade. And you know what? We're winning. I put a warning on or something on just that particular vaccine, but I certainly would have deposed it and, and gotten front page news all over the world. And then people don't want it. And did he probably even affect the others? Because, you know, there's a big situation with a lot of people don't want to take the vaccine. Well, this played right into their hands. And they want me to do public service messages and everything about everybody taking the vaccine. And look, I guess in a certain way, I'm the father of the vaccine because I was the one that pushed it. You know, to get it done in less than nine months was a miracle. Fauci said it would take three to five years. He thought it was uh, something that just wouldn't be that effective because it would take so long to get. We, I pushed the FDA like they have never been pushed before. I wouldn't exactly say they're, uh, they're in love with me. They have never, this is a very bureaucratic organization. I push them like they've never been pushed before, and that's why we have it. Revelation 6, 1 through 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were a noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, this is simply my opinion and for educational purposes only. If you look at the center of this logo, it's a cube with a tail on the end of it. When president number 45 was in office, there was a certain letter that was being thrown around, cube. If you look at the upper right-hand corner of the cube, you're gonna see the Hebrew letter Vav Vav Vav. I'm going to show you in a moment what that means. Also, take note to the thousand points of light behind it. These are all images 
that are being put in our faces on a daily basis, but only those who have eyes to see and ears to hear will accept the truth. This is an image of that cube. I strongly urge you go look it up and find out what it means so that you'll understand the meaning of the logo of Operation Warp Speed. Now, this is the black cube that I told you to remember before. This is nothing new but a fallen god, Saturn worship, or Moloch. Do your own research and understand where this comes from and just how many places these are located. Now, as for this star, that cube fits perfectly in the center of it, and it all goes hand in hand, just like the cube that this Jewish man is wearing on his forehead. Again, do your research and understand what these things mean. Now, remember at the top right-hand side of the cube, we saw Vav, Vav, Vav. This is also everywhere. If you have eyes to see, you'll see it. Psalms 106, 37. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils, a.k.a. Moloch. Now, people can say that we're conspiracy theorists all they want, but how many times do you need to see something as far as a hand gesture or a logo or a sign before it becomes reality? Are you going to keep buying into the lies over and over and over again? Or are you going to believe the truth for once? How many times do you have to see this hand gesture from this man and many others like him? before you actually believe that it's not a coincidence that people just sit around with their hands like this no matter where they're at. This is how they show their allegiance to their God. Matthew 24, four through eight, and Yeshua answered and said, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name saying, I am the Messiah and shall deceive many and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all of these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Dr. Anthony Fauci and other experts say that most of the people who can be vaccinated need to be vaccinated. But half of Americans now say they wouldn't take a vaccine if it was released now. If the Trump administration approves a vaccine before or after the election, should Americans take it and would you take it? If the public health professionals, if Dr. Fauci, if the doctors, tell us that we should take it, I'll be the first in line to take it, absolutely. But if Donald Trump tells us I should that we should take it, I'm not taking it. Remember, as above, so below. And as King Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. These people have no shame in pledging allegiance to who they serve. The problem is, is they expect you to serve no matter what regardless of your belief. Um, I'm gonna take my shot right now and then I'll speak after so I can also describe what that experience was, hopefully an encouragement that others will, will, will get their vaccination as quickly as they are able. All so right. with that, and we have Nurse Chan. Yes. Thank you. Oh, so welcome. shall I sit here? Yep, you can sit there. Okay. My name is Judy Chan. I'm one of the nurse practitioners from Occupational Medical uh -huh. Services. I just want to thank you very much for doing this. It's very, it's, we, we very much appreciate you coming here to do this for us. Of course. Um, I went over your medical history. Do you have any questions for me? I do not. And is the left arm okay? Yes, it is. And the vaccine may be a little thicker because um, it'll, it's going to go in slower because it's, it's a little bit thicker. Okay. Just to let you know. Okay. And you may get an enhanced reaction from the vaccine, okay. but that's normal. It's because your body is building immunity to the vaccine. Well, that's what we want. Say, yep. And because there's a question, I think it's, and it can be answered in the positive, a question whether I can mandate 
over state lines that every single state has to comply. Our legal team thinks I can do that based upon the degree to which there's a crisis in those states and how bad things are for the country. And if we don't do it, what happens? But I would make the case. I'd make the case why it's necessary. I'd have the scientists arrayed to lay out in detail why. And I would go to every governor, and I'd go to governors relating to Republican and Democratic governors, and I'd say, we have to have this national mandate. We must do it. The National Science Foundation is coordinating with the CDC and other agencies. They indicate that the first group of people that should get the uh, vaccine if and when it is available are people at the greatest risk. And that includes everything from nursing homes to people with serious pre-existing conditions that would cause people to be in real trouble. A lot of those people happen to be black and brown. Happen to be black and brown. And it's great. And you know what? I believe totally in your freedoms. I do. You got to do what you have to do. But I recommend take the vaccines. I did it. It's good. Take the vaccines. But you got no, that's okay. That's all right. You got your freedoms. But I happen to take the vaccine. If it doesn't work, you'll be the first to know, okay? I'll call up Alabama and say, hey, you know what? But it is working. But uh, you do have your freedoms. You have to keep you have to maintain that. So here it is, the snake. It's called the snake. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. The border. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and as soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed that vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, oh heavens, you would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed him and held him tight. But instead of saying, Thank you. That snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I have saved you, cried the woman. And you've bitten me, heavens, why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we've all succumbed to it now. We're we're all cyborgs, we're just low efficiency cyborgs. So how do we how do we make it better? I think we've got to build a we've got to build an interface. Um, like we didn't evolve to have a communications jack. Um, you know, or some we, we, so there's, there's gotta be essentially vast numbers of, of, of tiny electrodes uh, that are able to read write from your brain. Of course, you know, security is pretty important in this situation. To say the least. Um, I was going to say, I'm not coming with it. I'm keeping my brain air gapped. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people will choose to do that. Um, 
but um, it's a bit like Ian Banks in your lace, mm -hmm. but not. But, it, but in, in the case of your lace, it's sort of that. That's there from when you're born, or it, it's, it's sort of. It's not a. It's, it's more a of a. Backup. Sorry. It's a backup. Yeah, kind of a backup. Um, this would be. There's there's a digital extension of you. Uh, that is an AI. The AI extension of you, uh, a tertiary layer, of intelligence. Um, so you've got your limbic system, your cortex, and and the tertiary layer, which is the digital AI extension of you, and that high bandwidth connection is what um, achieves a tight symbiosis. I, I think that's the best outcome. I, I hope so. If anybody's got better ideas, I'd love to hear it. The first and like most immediate need for a robot is to be able to manipulate these threads and insert them into the brain. So the implant is kind of like this little puck of the secret sauce active electronics and the electrodes are these tiny little flexible threads that each at the very end have multiple little electrodes that if you get those electrodes next to a neuron, they can record what that neuron is doing. The nature of the device that we're implanting and the way that we're implanting it allows for minimal reaction of the brain tissue to our device to increase the lifetime. In order to do that, the devices are extremely fragile. The threads that we insert that contain the electrodes are tiny, sort of on the order of like 50 microns wide, five microns thick, 20 millimeters long. And so if you take one of them and sort of toss it into the air, it'll sort of float off like a piece of hair. And those tiny little flexible hairs are too small for a human to handle, even like with tweezers, and that's where the robot comes in. Computer vision and software, essentially high reliability software is really important. We've gone from not really being able to track the moving brain, which is critical for humans because the human brain moves a lot, to having this OCT-based system that essentially gives us this 21 hertz real-time view of a 3D volume of the brain that we're looking at. You're trying to do these like very fine uh, computer vision tasks and movement tasks to grab these threads. It's like an extremely hard engineering problem. I would say the next big goal for the robot would be to make it so that there's minimal neurosurgeon interface. That a neurosurgeon can walk in and talk to the patient, make them feel comfortable about the procedure, walk them through exactly what's going to happen, and then essentially click go. And the robot will be able to figure out exactly what the specific topography of the patient will be, target the areas, and take the surgery from the patient coming in and sitting down to them walking out of the door that same day. We make this so automated and safe and fast that like anyone can get it. Even the idea of really fast keyboard and mouse for myself that I don't need to use my hands for is like super alluring. Second Timothy 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinence, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of Yahweh, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind reprobate concerning the faith. Satan knows that his time is short and so do his minions. As scripture says, he was given the power and authority to transform himself into an angel of the light. So it's no wonder that his minions can do the same. The monument considered by some conservative Christians to be satanic was badly damaged by an explosive device. One of the four granite panels on the Georgia Guidestones monument was reduced to rubble. The attraction was built in 1980 from local granite and commissioned under the name R.C. Christian. The 19-foot-high panels bear a 10-part message in eight languages with guidance for living an age of reason. The so-called American Stonehenge also serves as a sundial and astronomical calendar. The bombing is under investigation. I think the current approaches will take us to general intelligence or do totally new ideas need to be invented. I think we're missing a few key ideas for general intelligence. General, artificial general intelligence. But it's going to be upon us very quickly. 
and then we'll need to figure out what shall we do if we even have that choice. The damage from last month's devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria could top $100 billion. That's according to the United Nations. And then there's the human loss. More than 52,000 people were killed last month when a series of massive earthquakes hit the area. The earthquake also destroyed more than 200,000 homes, leaving a humanitarian crisis in its wake. And it's still ongoing. News. And an agenda, agenda to control, to control exactly, exactly what people think. think. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our, our democracy. democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy.